a couple students that um, couldn't make the meeting in person can actually see it a little bit later. So today's class is about um, kind of a, a, a smorgasbord of talkings that I normally do in lessons, but sometimes just due to the fact of time, I don't get as much time to actually to actually speak about it. It's about careers, music, music resumes, and how you can um, really leverage your your musical experience that you've been having to help you with the process of up, you know applying to colleges and and really in your whole future successes. So this is going to be kind of an interactive thing. I would encourage you to get a piece of paper out so you can jot down some things as we're kind of brainstorming ideas. Um, or if you're on a computer and you want to open um, a Word document and start typing along, kind of getting the, the basics of your resume, that might be a good idea as well because we're going to kind of do some brainstorming sessions of what should go on a resume, a music resume. Um, and that's going to be different for every person. So that we'll go through what should be included or not. So um, just, I know a lot of you, but not, not any, um, not, not everyone. If you could actually take a moment and type in the chat, or you can actually unmute yourself and tell me if you want, up to you. Um, type in what your thought is on career choices. If you have a career choice, grade. Um, and if you've thought about music is either a major or minor, that would be very helpful to me to know who is in the group and who I, I'm speaking with. I can do it without, but it, it is kind of helpful um, there. So let me start off by talking about um, the concept of Let's see, where do I want to start? I have lots I want to talk about. Let's start off with the music resume. Let's actually start with the music resume. Let's start with the why. Why do I want a music resume? Um, and why should, if I'm in ninth grade right now and I have four years you know, to, to build my resume, why should I even think about it? The reason is, is you're going to forget stuff. I was just looking at my resume, um, and I haven't updated it in years. I don't necessarily always need to, to do it. And I'm, I, I've forgotten stuff already in the last couple of years um, that I might have wanted to include in it. So it's good to have kind of um, an updated music resume every year so that you can continually add to this um add to it and build it upon there because when you get to senior year you're going to forget some of those things that could have been um could have been something that you might want to include that was from freshman year maybe not but you know at least you have that that continual thing and the other thing is that you're going to be subtracting things that are not important anymore so like if you started building your resume in seventh grade it's not a bad idea um you're probably going to take off some of those things from seventh grade because they're not going to be so important and it'll be more featuring the the higher years but you'll have it for you know, some, some future um, things. So let's talk about who might be receiving this music resume. A um, couple of, of options. One is if you're going to be a music major or minors, a lot of times they require a music resume specific to music. Um, the other thing is it could help you just with your general applications to have all your information in one place um, that you could like fill in some very specific things if they didn't allow for a music resume. The other thing is let's just say that you decided that I don't want to do music as a major minor, I didn't get the opportunity to submit it in an application, but really, really smart to, to send that music resume to the college that you decided to go to if you want to do their music program. So you would send that music resume to the band director. You would send it to the to the teacher that was there and say, hey, I'm, I'm actually not doing music major or minor. I didn't have the opportunity, but it's super important. And I'm coming to your school and I'm enthusiastic and here's what I've done. That gives them the, the, the heads up that, oh, there's this eager freshman that's coming into the program that we should really be on the lookout for. And um, and a lot of times you'll get a response with that. This works a little bit better than just a generic email that says, hey, my name is Monica. I've been playing flute for four years and I kind of like to be in your program. You know, they're not going to get super excited about it because you're, don't, you're not presenting yourself in kind of in a professional alignment. So the music resume just kind of sets your, your professional tone of what you've done in your academic career and it sets an attention for what's going to be happening um, in your or your goal, I should say, of, of college. So um, let's talk about the music resume. And this is the point where you might want to get out a pencil, piece of pencil and paper um, and, um, and get that going. So I'm going to share my screen here because it's just a little easier to do that. So give me a second. Um, 
and we can we can work on some of this together so here's some ideas some things that should go on the obvious thing is your name and contact information I mean this is like super important and if this is just generic information you're gonna figure out the template and you, there are some websites that you can go to to help you know that have templates that would be helpful but this is more about this this one is not so much about the fancy like you know the fancy headings and the fancy um, the other things that you can um, do in terms of the templates and you know of course a little bit of decoration is is actually kind of nice it's, it's just a professional format but we're not going to go over that so your name and your contact information okay um then this is optional but it's one thing that i really responded to is some kind of a mission statement or some kind of a um st statement of intention now you don't have to have this on resumes and as a matter of fact you're going to get different um, feedback from other people that do and do not include it on it. So you can think about this particular quality as a high school student where people don't know you as much. I think it's actually kind of cool to put in a, some kind of a mission statement, something that says in two or three sentences who you are and you, what your intention is for the future. So um, just a little bit of a backstory. I, I was doing some interviews for an organization where I was on the receiving end of some of those resumes and I was able to go through some of them and I found my own um, preference based upon like what I was reading, what was the clearest information, what format resonated with me as an interviewer, who I would call back or who I just re resonated most with, kind of had to do with how they laid out their resume what they included on it, which is what we're going to go on. And then I, you know, I just, this is where I really began the, the mission type of a thing is I, th I thought, well, you know, really when I see that mission statement, I connected much more to the information that was on the resume a little bit more. So let's take a look at what, what a mission statement might look like. And by the way, this is going to change. If you're a freshman, probably this will change by the time you're a sophomore or a junior or a senior. Um, it's going to definitely change. So one template is just this, this reading right here. My goal is, and then name some kind of achievable goal and for a certain cause. And I will become, and then your career, if you know it, you can say unknown. Um, actually, if, you, if it's unknown, I might just leave the sentence out. Um, you could put a different sentence and we'll go through that in a second. Um, and then each day I will do some kind of a daily task so I can make improvements. Then I can blank make steps to have achievable long-term goal um, to show my skills to the community. Okay, so what does that really mean? So here's an example. So I have a lot of students that come to me that say I want to be a doctor or a lawyer um, or an engineer or whatever that 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 is. Um, and so it's kind of good to put that in the resume, if even a music resume, because it shows them your intention. There's nothing wrong with having, you know, a dream. There's like, you know, doctors are, are essential as we, that new word has really become resonating. So let's just use the doctor one. So in this particular example would be my goal is to become a doctor to help people here to heal during their time of need. Music has always been a huge part of my life, and I look forward to continue to being in many of the ensembles and practicing daily in college. My goal is not my goal is to not only reach music excellence, but also to use it as a wellness tool so I can be an amazing doctor. That just kind of just shows that, okay, this is a person that really wants to be a doctor, but music is really important to their life, and they're going to continue that onwards beyond their, their college goal, but also they're going to have that um, in their presence for this next um, four years of, of college. Let's take it a step back. Another reason that you could have a music resume is for some type of a competition or some kind of a camp. So when you have a music camp, let me just stop screen short so I can, so when you have some kind of a camp or um, or competition like you know a lot, a lot of you have done the honors performance competition, they require a resume. That, goal or that mission statement is going to be changed slightly. You're not going to be talking about the next four years, right? You're going to be talking about the experience of the honors performance series. So that's just a chance to give that little highlight. You know, music is very important. I look forward to performing with other amazing musicians from around the nation um, and playing in Carnegie Hall. That's a really great mus mission statement. That says why I'm doing it. I'm excited about this. Um, Let's see another reason for that. It might actually just be that you're auditioning for some kind of an orchestra. So sometimes you have an orchestra, youth orchestra auditions, and they might not even ask for a resume. 
Can you bring in a resume? Yes, for sure. If you're auditioning for the San Francisco Youth Symphony Orchestra, um, first of all, they require a resume, but some of them don't, um, where you wouldn't necessarily need to present a resume. But, you know, to have your resume with a piece of music that you're going to be playing, and I would just put it there kind of as a heading, and then they can look at it briefly. They're not going to get a chance to look at the, all the details, but they can kind of get a highlight of it. They get to know you as a player, because that's what an audition is, right? It's it's kind of just, are you going to fit into our program? Um, do you have the, the mentality and the vision so that I'm going to come to all the rehearsals? I'm going to come to um, and practice my parts at home. Not only am I good at my instrument and I pass this audition, but I am going to be a good community member. Are those two different things? Yeah, they are two very different things because you can be an amazing player, but if you're not a team player, if you don't have this vision of practicing your instrument and blending to the other instruments around you, are you going to be a good ensemble player? No. So just the music resume itself, it's not going to tell the entire picture, but it gives you a little bit more of a glimpse of your mindset as you're going into this audition or the, the, the mindset of you at home um, beyond the 10 or 15 minutes. Auditions are super short. They, they are um, they are just meant to tell a glimpse of you. So the re music resume could give you a bigger picture, bigger sense of the picture. Um, if it comes down to a very, very marginal tie, just imagine yourself. That's what I do. Imagine yourself as the adjudicator. If you're trying to decide, okay, because in an orchestra, let's just use flute because I'm a flutist. Um, there's usually only four, maybe five slots for flutist. Um, let's just say that because it's it's in a rotating situation that like, you know, two or three are already taken up from previous years. They're juniors and seniors. That means they only have one or two spots, but there's three applicants that almost tied. The person that did the music resume might actually have a little bit of an advantage because it gave them, gave them a bigger sense of the picture. They presented themselves as a little bit more accountable. They presented themselves with a bigger part of the picture that that, that adjudicator, those judges, could see a little bit beyond the 10 minutes. It gave them a greater sense of vision. So music resumes can be used in your high school career as well. Um, you can use it to when you go into a new high school to, sh you know, give to your band director, just, you know, because band directors, they have what? They have not only just your bands, but they have the bands for all the grades in a jazz band and an orchestra. They have a lot of kids, students. And so it takes them time to get to know their, their students. Um, so just an email introduction, you know, with a resume and saying, you know, I'm really excited to be in your program and learn from you. I, I realize you have a lot of students. I thought I would introduce myself with my music resume. Already, you're going to, they're going to have a better sense of you. It's not, go, it's not about like, you know, um, brown nosing or, you know, trying to, trying to get their attention. It's really just about introducing yourself in a very effective manner. These were things I didn't do in high school, by the way. I did not introduce myself to, to new band directors this way, but I think it's a really good idea. Um, okay, so let's, let's go back to, I'm going to share my screen again and talk about some of the other content that we might want to put on the resume. So, the, you know, you're going to have to really think about this mission statement, and it's going to change, and you might have a couple things. The other things to include are education. That's the, you know, the high school. If you're just in high school, you know, you might want to include your middle school, too, maybe even your elementary school. And by the time you're in college, you know, for the college, take off the elementary school. They don't need to know that you went to Valley Verde Elementary School. It's, it's, it's not important anymore. Um, you might even want to take off the middle school at that point. Um, so, the, but you can include in the education any music school. So, if you're taking lessons with one of, the, one of the teachers from the community arts education, you should put that on there. You can put that you went to the community arts education. Gives them a little bit of sense that you've taken, you know, you've taken your studies outside of the high school music program. Um, and then if they're in different locations, if you if you have moved from different different cities and study with different people, make sure that that's kind of indicated. So you put the, the city. Otherwise, you could just put that at the title, you know, in your information um, that it's from, you know, Walnut Creek, California, a lot of you guys. OK, then principal teachers. Um, so, for example, you know, include your band directors and your private teachers. And it's nice to have some contact info right there so that they can reach out if need be. Um, and if they need a letter of recommendation or, or anything like that, they well, first of all, hopefully they indicate that for college. That's a separate thing. But it is nice to have some contact information so that they they know um, how to reach the teacher if if you're presenting that. Um, so band directors, private teachers. Um, 
if you've had more than one private teacher, more put that there. Um, if you've played more than one instrument um, and you consider them both to be kind of your strong instruments, for example, if you're a pianist and a vocalist, put that there. Make sure they're indicated that way. You know, piano teacher, and you can put the dates that you, you're, you've done that. Um, and then your your vocal teacher, you would put that, that there as well. Okay, then um, the next thing is ensemble experience. So this can be, you have to like brainstorm. This is where you forget things. So this can be all the bands that you're in. So you can put, you know, concert bands, wind ensemble, and then, you know, only put the position if it really um, highlights you well. For example, if you're first chair, you know, definitely put that in, you know. Um, if you're second chair, put co-principal, don't put second chair. <laughs> that's also, that's also very fa favorable. If you're band director, like I know Las Loomis doesn't put first chair, second chair, they just put rotating schedule. Then just don't, don't put that down at all. Just put, just, so just put, um, Las Loomis wind ensemble and put like, you know, the, the dates there. Um, but if you did get a principal position in one of those, definitely include that. This is another place that you can include festival ensembles. Now, if you have a lot of festival ensembles that you've been in, if you've been in district and you've been in county, you've been in all state, you've been in a lot of things, you might want a separate category just for festivals. Um, but if you have not, you, that is just maybe one or two, don't make a separate te heading, just put that under, under ensemble experience. Um, don't forget about things like flute choirs. Um, you can even include like the flute ensembles if you've done that for CMEA because that is an ensemble if you want to if you if you're looking to add of course we don't want to ever lie on a resume we don't want to ever lie on a music resume but you know part of a music resume is really highlighting your skills and what you do and making sure that it sounds like you love what you do because you do and it's important to you which it is um so you can include those those ensembles that you might have formed for a specific festival type of experience okay we're going to put that somewhere else too and then you know some your recital performances so we talk about this first so re go back and don't list every single recital no one wants to hear you know on february 2nd and then on march 8th and then like you know you could list the whole thing we don't want to we don't want to bombard them with information that is going to be um like really time consuming to look through okay I'll go about sidetrack a minute go back to my resumes when i was looking at resumes your resume should only be for high school about a page long because you want it at, at, at a glance as you get into your professional career that could be a little longer but not a, a book i was literally presented with nine page resumes I, I couldn't believe it it was it was i was like you know reading a novel and if you have a hundred of those there that you're like reading i didn't quite have a hundred but imagine if you had a hundred and someone gives you a nine page resume um it's filled with things that are not essential. It didn't give me a bigger picture or a clearer picture of who this person was. It actually irritated me a little bit, you know, because I had to like, you know, thumb through pages and it actually made it a disfavorable experience as I was looking through the resume, because let's just face it, we're getting, we're kind of put, put designing a piece of paper that's, that's kind of, you know, judged in some capacities. We're, we're, we're looking for highlights, but we're kind of, we're kind of usually judging this perspective. So um, don't put, you know, every single performance ever. Instead, an idea might be to put annual recitals at civic, I, I always want to say civic arts education, community arts education, and then you put some dates, you know, or biannual, that would be better because at least we usually have two, you know, a year, biannual recitals and then put the dates, 2000 and... 16 through 2018 that gives them the idea that oh this person is performing regularly and um and not listing every single one but then maybe put some other things you can put some other like locations that you did some solos for example if you performed at the nursing homes or you i have some students that perform often at nursing homes this would be a great place to put this down um annual performances or monthly performances and then name the nursing home that you did that at um if you performed for the, you know, I, I would like to keep it a, would, probably not this year, but you know, I, I'd like to bring December students to go to a nursing home where we perform together as a big group. That would be another place that you could list that, you know, December holiday concerts, um, 
recital concerts and then name the nursing home or you can just put nursing home walnut creek um that gives them the sense of something else that you did if you did any solos with your bands that would be a place to to record that opportunity as well so you can put soloists sometimes your seniors are invited to do a solo at the end of the year um and there's probably more that i'm not thinking of and you want to like just really brain track in your in your your last couple of years and say, where did I perform? Um, you know, don't necessarily need to put, you know, your dinner concert at your family home, but you know, there might be some other things that you've done. Um, another student, one of my students who did the, you know, performing at the Berkeley Street Festival where they, you know, just performed outside and, or maybe there's something you can think of in the future. Like, you know, I could put that on my resume. That might be a cool thing for me to do, number one. And number two, that would be something to add to my resume. So that's a big section, the, the, um, the performances okay now we get to the camps so camps so you're taking this one class and we are we named ourselves for a reason you can put this on your resume you participated in the contra costa music guild virtual camp summer of 2020 and everyone will exactly know why even if it's three years from now why it was a virtual camp because this is the summer of covid so you can put that there so so def everyone has that go back in your you know your um and, and list any camps that you've gone to that were music specific. If you've gone to other camps that are not music specific that, but you feel like it really um, highlights you well, we're gonna have another section that maybe you can include some of those miscellaneous things, but not necessarily in this section. All right, next one, awards. So you can include, you should include mostly the music awards here. So CMEA Solo and Ensemble Contest. So this is, um, lots of my students have done this. Um, first of all, the first time you do this, actually spell it out, California Music Educators Association, because if you're applying to somewhere in New York, they might not necessarily know those notations quite as much, or, or if they're just not as much of a, um, they, they just might not know that association. So just put that, and then put CMEA, so that in the future you can just put those initials. Um, again, don't list every single one if you've gone for eight years and a lot of times people have done more than one of those so you might have done the ensemble and you might have done a solo don't put 20 20 different categories of, of cmea instead it really does show a lot of um it, it shows a lot if you can list that you've done it i'm just using the year i'll use 2013 some of you guys have done this like you know ellie i know you've done this for a long time 2000 13 through 2020 participation in the California Music Education Awards and then you can put your exact award title that you've gotten down so you can put you know excellence and um, and oh, I'm forgetting the excellence gold is it gold no it's not superior I'm sorry forgot their ratings superior or command performance you can put those down um, you might want to, if it's like been a mix of things you can put like you know three excellence, two superiors, three command performances received during the course of the eight years. And you can just put that rather than listing them all out. And, and it's really hard to remember if you've been doing this for a really long time, which year you got excellent, which year you got superior. That's, that's hard for everyone to remember. So, um, and it's okay if you've like forgot one of them, like, you know, maybe did I get in sixth grade, did I get a superior, did I get an excellent, you know, just just do your best to guess. Um, no one's going to ask for your certificates for these. <laughs> um, but again, you don't want to lie, so that you want you want to be truthful on these. You just you just want to. Um, sometimes you have to guesstimate because because especially when you're doing this years later, it's it's really hard to remember that. Um, other awards that you could have gotten. Um, if you've done any of the assessment programs, like if you've done the Royal Conservatory assessment program, you can maybe put that there if you've gotten an honors there. Um, if you've done a bunch of those, um, you might want to start your own category. But if you've only done one of them, if you've only gotten, you know, let's um, since they stopped doing them at the at the art center, I know a lot of us did the earlier ones, but didn't do some of the later ones because it's kind of hard to get to them. Um, so in that case, you could put like honors. Uh, level four Royal Conservatory of Music program things, but don't necessarily have its own category. Um, academic awards. Okay, so I, when I did my my um, when I did my resume for colleges, I did actually have I went through this with my teacher. I had a very short little section for my academic awards, um, and even though it's a music resume. 
um, that's kind of helpful. If you've been in the honor society for four years, that's, that's kind of helpful to know if you've been in, um, oh, give me some other examples that I put on. If you've gotten like, you know, a poetry award or best writing award or perfect attendance award, anything that reflects on you as a responsible person that might be portrayed into your musical career as well. Like if you've, you've gotten perfect attendance in school, it's probably a pretty good, you know, bet that you're going to show up to your classes for, um, for your, your college or your rehearsals. Um, I don't even know if they give those anymore. Do they give those anymore? <laughs> they used to in my, in my day. Um, and then other awards might be, you know, the National Honor Society. That's, that takes a lot of work, you know, right? So if you've gotten into that, um, if there's a certain club you've done, um, you know, chess club, you know, debate team. Um, if you've, Ellie, I know you started your, your, own, your own Etsy thing. You can maybe put that there. Um, you know, just gives them a little hint of what you're doing without, like, you know, listing the, you know, a whole gamut of other things. It's still keeping a focus, but it's just giving a little bit of a reflection of other activities that you might have done. Um, so think about that. That section can be um, can be there. All right. So then other music activities. So this could be a section where maybe you took piano and maybe you took it for five years. Maybe you took it from like kindergarten to fifth grade. Let's just say that. You don't want to necessarily highlight it, but it actually does show that you you had a musical stronger background as a as a kid, and then you transformed into flute. I might I might include that there, especially for you know high school going into college. This is one of these things that you're going to drop off for sure after college. No one wants to know you needs to know that you took piano from you know ages five to ten when you're applying as a as a professional or if you're doing grad school. But but at the you know the stage of the game, that's that's kind of helpful. Um, AP music theory, some, sometimes it's offered in, in classes. You might want to put that there. Um, let's see, if you played another instrument and you didn't include it, so say that you were in, um, you did violin from, you know, age five to 10, you can put that there too. Um, trying to think of that, that's probably pretty much the, the best examples of those are secondary instruments um, and, you know, any music theory or any music, um, history that you've taken that you can if you want list some of the classes if you've been taking the music history classes through the Contra Costa program you can list that there um, other music activities you know music history summer of 2020 that could go there if you're looking to kind of um, just expand your resume just a little bit more um, oh one other thing you know you guys are my, my personal students a lot of you guys are my personal students um, I gave everyone an award I mean, because you guys are all great and you have unique things. I, I, I thought of awards that really um, kind of showcased your, your individual skills and talents. So you all have one at least to put in that. And I did that for this reason is I want to make sure that you have um, some stuff to put on your music resume. So um, you earned it. I'm not just saying that I gave those out freely. Everyone earned that award, but they were specifically thought of, they were invented to really showcase your individual skills as players and people and, and personalities. Um, so if you don't remember that, you're going to have to go through your records, or I guess I will have to go through them. Um, then we have significant repertoire. Okay, this is a big section of music resumes. Because it gives them a, an idea of what you've done. And so these different sections of repertoires, um, what I did to kind of to kind of expand it a little bit when I did my high school resume, I remember doing this because it was like too much information. I did little text boxes. I did text boxes of music, um, significant music pieces, and then I did significant etudes and then significant orchestral excerpts. If you haven't done an orchestral excerpts much, obviously leave that out. But everyone has done etudes, everyone has done pieces. Uh, this is one you're going to be constantly updating, you know, constantly updating because it's going to be a short section, maybe just like, you know, five to ten in each, depending on this, because remember, you want to keep this to one page. Um, so for the significant pieces, do put the the name of the piece. Um, so, for example, if you just don't put just Vivace, 
No one knows what that is. There's too many vivaches. Instead, let me use one that, like, okay, so we'll do the um, sonata in F major by Telemann, and then you would put vivace would be the movement. Um, if you memorized it, that might be a place to indicate that there, because that shows that not only did I do this, but I memorized the piece as well. Um, so that's there. If you want to put significant wind ensemble pieces, you can include that too. Some actually ask for orchestral or wind ensemble pieces. Um, and so think about the, the most the most challenging or rewarding of those because there's too many of them to include and maybe keep that updated there. That gives them an idea of your, your band's level or your ensemble level, your orchestral level that you've actually done. Um, so, you know, that's that's one thing that that you guys need to do yourself because we don't necessarily do those so much in private lessons, but that that you can be constantly running those up there. Um, oh, and then etudes. OK, so significant etudes that you've done. So you can keep track of some of those things. You don't need to necessarily put the, the exact thing you can put. Select etudes by Garibaldi, Anderson, Kulau, you know, any of the ones that we've done. That gives them an idea of, of what you've done. That would give me a very clear idea. I don't need to know exactly that you did the F major of Garibaldi. I don't need to know that, you you know, you did that. But it gives me just an idea that this person has been doing, um, has been doing some studies. That gives me that, gives me that very strong indication. Um, as far as method books, don't necessarily put those down. They don't need to know that we did the blocky. They don't need to know we did the Rubank series. You know, it, it's, it's kind of a different, a different thing. I think that that's assumed that you did some kind of a method book, um, but they don't need to know the specifics of that. So that can be a really big section. And that's something that we could brainstorm together. Or you should brainstorm with your teacher together. Like, you know, what pieces should I put on here? Cause that, that's a little subjective. Um, and that's what, you know, teachers are great for is helping us with those kind of things. All right. Um, okay. So that, that concludes that most of the, the thoughts on that. Yeah. Okay. My examples of resume. So that's, there's could be other things that you can put on your resume that's unique to you, but those are the major categories of that. Now let's talk about other situations where maybe you don't want a specific, like an, a full out music resume. Maybe this is for, something that you want to highlight music, that you'll at least have your music resume and you can easily take the information that's pertinent and put it in another resume. For example, maybe you're applying to a computer science camp, um, but you want to include the idea that music is important um, to you. So you can take some of those elements, some of those ensembles, it could maybe just be music would be the heading, um, musical experience, and you would take the best of each one of those selections and put those in. Don't put the repertoire in because a computer science person, is, it's going to be nothing to them. But they, you know, the fact that you did the California Music Educators, you know, Association and you performed well for, you know, eight years, I'm just making it up, you know, that's important. The fact that you were in your school band program for the last, you know, nine years, eight years, seven years, whatever it is, that's kind of important. That's good. It shows that you're, you're using, um, your musical skills in a very serious way. And if you're serious about music, you know, those same qualities might apply to computer science, right? And it's really known, there's been studies about this, that music really does, music students do perform better um, in both the academic setting and in the real world setting. And I, one of the reasons that they cite is that we use so many different elements of our brain at one time, though kind of the both sides of our brain, you have, you have the mathematical side that does the counting, you have the ear that has to listen to it. We have so many things that we need to read the music, we need to finger the notes, we need to articulate them, we need to use our breath control. There's so many fine motor, very, very, very small motions and very, very, um, a lot of thought process that goes into our brain that it's just, it, it helps our brain develop better. So, so um, there's been some papers out from pro, um, professionals that actually um, have cited that music, people that study music have actually performed better, not only academically, but actually in professions as well. So um, that's one reason that you want to maybe leverage music into your application because those are pretty wide known studies. If you want to leverage your music to, to make sure that they know that I'm a good student, not only am I just a good musician, but you're trying to say, hey, I want you to consider my music part of this because it's important to me, number one. And number two, um, 
you're not saying this, but you're, you know, in a, in a, in, in kind of an unspoken way, you're saying, I'm going to be a really great student. I'm going to be an awesome student at your university. I'm going to be a great member of the community. I'm going to be hardworking. I really have developed my, my capacity to learn and grow as a person because you need patience to do music. Music is something you don't get to a certain level of music without patience you have to have patience and that is kind of a fundamental for every single career and academic choice as well you need, you need to have patience in order to be able to learn something you can't get frustrated and 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 um and stop the learning process because music is a constant evolving learning process as we all know right um okay from here I want to talk about career choices in music. So let's talk about music minor. Why? Why would I want to be a music minor? Do I want to be a music minor? There's pros and cons to both of it. So let's talk about what you might need for a music minor. And it's different, a little bit different for each college. You're going to have to like look into this for each college. But right now, most of us are taking private lessons, right? Most of us are doing some kind of an ensemble. So those are the two main things that you get credits and grades for when doing a music minor. There's also some music theory, which we're touching base on, maybe a little bit of music history, but those things are things that you should hopefully enjoy. You're gonna learn through them, but you're already doing an ensemble. You're not required to do it. You're already doing private lessons. You're not required to do it. You know, now you, you all get the opportunity to do those things um, but you're going to be graded for it. It's going to be part of your GPA. It's going to be part of your credentials for that music minor. Um, so that's one reason to just consider a music minor if it, if it fits into your schedule because you enjoy doing it um, and it's a chance to further your growth in college. Some schools might not have as many opportunities for ensembles if there's a limited. So let's just say that they only have two bands and an orchestra um, and they have let's say, you know, a hundred flutists that, that I'm using flute because it's my instrument, a hundred flutists that come in. Obviously a hundred flutists are not going to fit into those programs. So how are they going to um, mitigate those so that they, those, they can get those players in? Sometimes they only let the majors or minors into those programs. Sometimes just the majors, depending if it's a really, really small program, but usually majors or minors. So sometimes just by declaring a minor, it might get you more opportunities to play in the ensembles that you would want to play in. Whereas if you were not minoring in music, you might not have those. Again, this is college to college. You want to, you want to really explore this option. The other question I get is, is it going to cost me more to do a music minor? Probably not. Probably not. As long as you can fit it in your four years, it's going to cost the, the exact same. And, and, you know, your parents are usually paying for private lessons, right? You're not going to have to pay for those private lessons. Um, and it's usually not four years for a music minor. It's usually only two years. Um, so you won't have to pay for music lessons. You won't have to pay for the ensembles. It's all included in your tuition. So my thought is, is if you enjoy music and you really love it and you want to do it and it's you want to be a doctor, you want to be a lawyer, you want to do do something, you know, that that's that's a reason to actually um, to do those music minors is just to continue what you love to do. Um, is it going to help you get a job? You know, again, I go back to the thought of the music minor um, and showing that you're a diligent student and, and you're using music maybe as wellness. You're not going to stress out as much. You know, th those are things that, that an employer could look at, but not so much. I mean, if you're applying in, a, in the real world to do something and you're, you have a music minor, um, it's not going to help as much. A couple options with it, that it might actually be helpful is computer science because if you have you know music knowledge and you're working on spotify teams that work with spotify facebook um you know all of those things if you have some music knowledge those that could actually be helpful for programming for programming things just to have a little music knowledge um so that's the music minor part of it. Can you teach? Sure, you can. You can do some some private teaching. You will not be able to teach in a university setting or, or um, a you know public school setting with a with a music minor. Um, it's a lot of times just for your own continued learning, um, and to support the major that you're you're doing and the fact that you just love it and it's it's not costing you anything extra. Um, music major is a little different. There's pros and cons to that as well. Um, when I was beginning to be a music major, my teacher didn't really go through these these pros and cons with me. And, and I, I ended up, I love what I do, and, and so I, I don't regret it, but I always make sure that I tell my students that there's, there's some pros and cons to music major. You know, for the classical world, 
you know, there's, there's very limited positions for orchestras. So if you're thinking that I want to do a music major and I'm going to do, I only want to be in an orchestra, it's, it's something to rethink because, you know, the chances that you're going to get a good paying orchestral job right out of college are pretty slim. There's just, there's four of them in, in, in the flute world, right? And we call this musical chairs because as soon as one orchestra position opens, what happens is someone from this other orchestra maybe auditions here and they get that position. And then this orchestra opens up and then this, so even though there's like 20 auditions maybe a year for flute, there might only be five openings in the, in the major orchestras, not even the major, the majors and mid orchestras to, to do that. And it costs a lot of money. So you're out of college and you you have maybe a couple student loans, maybe you don't, but generally when you're out of college, you don't, you're not making a ton of money and it takes money to actually go to these auditions. This is something no one told me that, you know, you, you'll be, you'll be out of school. You'll still have to be practicing all this time. And now you'll have to figure out how to get to New York and stay a couple days um, and audition for this orchestra. Um, and it's very different than, than you were doing auditions in, in school. So if orchestra is the only thing you want to do, if I just, I'm not going to be happy teaching. I hate teaching. I hate, I hate everything about the, that kind of concept. You're probably not going to be happy. And I say this only because I, I've actually, unfortunately, met some very unhappy musicians. A lot of us are happy. Some are unhappy. Um, so, so you want to make sure that you're, you're really setting your expectations of what that is going to look like. The other thing that no one told me is that in order to be a, a good, successful musician, you have to have some kind of business knowledge because um, a lot of times you're advocating for yourself. You're building your own business. You're, you're what's called a sole proprietor. You're, you're building your, your self as an entity in a business. And here you thought you were just going to share music with the world and just do this music thing. I, I happen to like both of them, but I will say is if you do decide you want to do music, do business classes as well. This is something I, I did not do. It was not required at the time. I think they're requiring some of them at the big schools now. Um, but it's something you should look into and seek out because you're going to want that information when you graduate college. It's going to very much benefit you to have some music business if you've decided to be a music major. Okay, so what else can you do with music major? There are some things that you can do with music major outside of it. Music therapy, you have to go to grad school for it, but it's a great, some of my students, you know, kind of resonate towards this, which is the idea that you would use music to help people with their physicalities or if you're going to, um, an Alzheimer's unit, it help, music helps trigger new memories. So you would actually be using music um, in a way that's therapeutic, kind of like art therapy, there's music therapist. Um, and that's a very specific thing. Uh, there are things like music licensors. You can actually license music for film. That's a very specific thing, a little hard to get into, but they make pretty good money where they are listening. You're listening to the music and going, oh, this is going to be great for this show. This is going to be good for this show. Um, there is, of course, the recording industry. So, you know, in the um, in the scheme of music, you probably get revenue streams from many different places. For me, it's a lot of education, but it's also the music I've recorded and it gets played on Sirius XM. That's a revenue stream. So we call these like little revenue streams. So, but if I wanted to do 100% just music revenue, you know, you kind of have to be streaming a lot more. Um, and have a lot more songs that are played on like the Sirius XMs. People like, um, I'm just good. the Lizzo, who's a flute player, pops into my mind. She can make it 100% just on her royalty streams. Doesn't matter on C CDs, just on the, the the amount of material streaming on the internet. So that is a revenue stream. But are you as a flutist? Most classical flutists don't um, do not make it on 100% royalties for being a soloist. Um, so if you want to be a soloist, to say you're a pianist, and I want to be a soloist. That's a hard that's a hard ticket in terms of building and, and supporting yourself right away um, financially. So this is not to discourage you. This is just to give information that there's some pros and cons to both of them. Now let's go with the, the teaching room. I love, you know, I teach a lot of you guys. I, I love what I do. I love creating music. I love sharing music and teaching and sharing with the next generation and, and finding new ways to present that information. And it's a very rewarding for me. I love what I do. It's just, it's a different intention than what I thought I would have set out to be when I very first started, which was to be playing in one of the big orchestras. Um, and my vision has changed. I'm not, I'm not sad about that. I'm not, it's not something that I regret. Um, it's just a different mindset. I didn't have quite have that, that clear mindset when I was going into um, 
high school into college. Um, it's not something that I thought practically about. I was really good. I was, I was really awesome. I worked really, really hard. It's not something that I, that I thought like, oh, that there's going to be obstacles to this when I graduate high school that might be a little bit out of my control. Um, and fortunately, I, I love what I do, and it was never a regret, but that's something to think about if you're thinking about a music major, because it's a very, it's a very high turnover, meaning that a lot of people that do music majors end up doing a different career after college. And why is that? It's not that they didn't love music. They love music still. They probably still do music. But it's that they, they got out into the, into the real world and they realized, oh, it's really hard to make a living doing this right off, right off the get-go. Um, it's a little hard work and it's a lot of business and it's not really what I thought it was going to be. It's just a different vision than I thought it was going to be and I would rather do this over here. So, so I say this right now just to educate everyone that that's a possibility when you think about um, music um, major that you might be doing a lot of business for yourself because um, most musicians are. Um, so let's go back to the resume for a second because this is mostly about the resume. Um, the resume part of this, um, you don't need to decide any of these things, music major, music minor, um, right at this very moment. If you're, especially if you're a, you know, s freshman, sophomore, junior, you're just kind of thinking about it and it's not to be stressful. It's just to kind of put your, your, your music, um, ideas on paper right now or what you've done on paper right now and keep it updated so that when you get to, um, the process where you you might need a res music resume or maybe you're doing your your college applications you have it ready you've already done it, that part of it um and it's just kind of always you update it just about you know for you guys probably every six months would be a really good time to update it doesn't take long um and and then you always have an updated resume okay i want to open this up for any questions does anyone have any questions either about music careers or music resumes that I could answer. You can type them if you don't want to share your information. Anything about music resumes that you don't know if you should include or not include? And a lot of you are very crafty. Let's just, I'll just say this is that, you know, you can put a headshot if you want into your actual Ah, yes. Uh, you could put a headshot if you want into your actual resume, like a little little circle that looks really nice as well. Kind of give it a, um, um, the at a glance thing, especially if they're not seeing you in person. Like Jenna just asked me, photos are you playing? That that would be really good. So that doesn't have you don't have to get a professional professional, but preferably with the flute or, or no, I say flute because I, I teach flute preferably with your instrument so that they can see it at a glance they can see oh this is a person and she's playing flute and then I can connect the the, the image to the actual um, information on the page and then if you come in then I can recognize you so that's that's always a, a good thing to do I have not done that in the in the past but I think it's a good idea anything else Okay, well, that, that's, that'll wrap it up. You can, I think most of you guys, um, I think most of you guys have um, my contact. I will put this in the chat for everyone. If you have specific questions, I'm happy to help you with that. Um, and also, I'm happy to look at resumes if you send them, send them my way. If, um, uh, if you're not one of my students, that would be a good thing for you to ask your teacher because I don't know you specifically, so I can't brainstorm quite as much like, hey, you forgot this, or maybe you should include this piece. Um, so that would be, most teachers are more than happy to to help with this kind of kind of thing. It's just one of those things we don't have as much time and lessons to go through um, detail by detail, so it's kind of something you have to work on um, on your own, okay? All right, so. It was, this was fun. I'm glad we had this. I recorded it so I can share it with some other students that, that are not here. Um, and I will see you all this next week. Just a couple little updates. Um, the music history class is still going on on Tuesdays. That's been really successful. You might want to check that out. I'm doing a keyboard class if you've not done any piano ever and you want to do a little foundation piano. Thursdays, right before the flute class, 2.15 to 2.45. We're going through the very basics, but at an accelerated rate, hopefully. Um, and then I believe that there's either conducting or harmonizing that's on 
uh, Friday. Blue class is still on 3, th 3 o'clock on uh, Thursdays. Okay? All right, guys. I'll see you later this week. Bye-bye.